Welcome back to Board Game Closet. Uh, I'm Tim. I'm Rod. And today we're going to look at Sales of Glory, the Napoleonic Wars by Ares Games. Uh, it is mostly a miniatures game played out on a match. Uh, and first thing uh, we'll do is show you what comes inside the box. Alright, so here you go. These are all the components of the game uh, laid out. Uh, we have a bunch of tokens over here uh, and, and Becky's already sorted out. So we're not going to pour all these out, but as you can see, there are a lot of them in there. <laughs> but otherwise, this is what comes in the box. Uh, nice thick instruction booklet. So, I'm going to start by going over the instructions here. Uh, this, this game, it's, it's actually got a lot of rules to it, a lot of components that you need to learn. Um, but the, the instruction booklet does a really good job. Uh, and going over everything and it starts you off on real basic rules which is basically just moving and shooting uh, the ships here uh, so that's really nice and everything is is laid out so uh, in like a step-by-step -step here so of course it gives you the first you know big pictures and whatnot to show you what each component is so when it references it you'll actually know what they are and plus when it goes over the basic rules the, the first set that it actually goes through these are like introductory rules it actually shows you pictures of everything that's going to be included in um, in those rule sets, and then gives you a basic scenario that you can play out with the basic rules. So it's very nice in that that respect. It kind of gives you like a tutorial. Uh, then it goes up to standard rules, uh, which adds a, a couple more components, a couple more rules to, to to do, and then it does all the way up into advanced. And the advanced rules is every uh, all the main rules to the game, every component. Uh, on the board um, and then after that uh, it gives you other rules or additional rules uh, that you can add to the game just for extra flair or for certain scenarios that you want to play uh, that way like you can add reef damage and um, boarding actions and stuff like that um, that really adds to the the flavor of the scenario or something so Overall, it's a, it's a good instruction booklet, and it's very well done on um, explaining everything and giving you lots of extra scenarios that you can play. Uh, so, Rod, why don't you tell us about the components? Okay, so uh, Ares Games is the one that makes the game. Um, and m what I'm familiar with them is, is the War of the Ring, and that game was packed with miniatures and you know, had tons of uh, the, the map board was humongous, I mean, and we just loved all the pieces. Uh, here, same thing. The only thing that you, that you don't get with the game is this mat. Uh, we had to pay extra for it, and I highly advise that you get it. It helps a lot with the, with just keeping the uh, the battle confined to you know a small area. The um, pieces themselves, uh, they're really nice. The the colorful. Uh, they have, um, as you can see, it just has the uh, it just has a full fill of the you know the wooden ship battles, which you expected to see. You know the the blue sea, and then the white sails, and then of course the uh, the wooden hulls. It's just, it's just the beautiful pieces. Um, there's not a lot of distinction between the pieces, so you know this one right here. In, in some ways, to me, I mean, I don't. I guess I would like to see a little, little bit more of a, that identifies the, the ships a little better, but they look pretty much just like a miniature version of the large one. But all in all, the pieces are real nice. They sit on this board. Um, little complaint is that the ships, this one like in particular, tends not to sit in there very well, so it tends to move around a lot when we're playing. The only thing that I think I may have a little bit of problem with also is like uh, these boards right here. You actually, you know, you put, your, you get these for your ships. Each ship has an individual one. They get placed into here, and then your ship has a, has basically its reference card which sits down into here. Then you have your movements, and then you have what I call chits, C H I T S, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which are these right here. Which whoever played the old Avalon Hill games would be very familiar with these. Uh, there's a million of these, and each one does something different, so there's a lot to keep track of. Um, but you know, as these go, they're just as good as any others. Uh, the, you're able to identify what they are, so they're fine. So all in all, I think when it comes to the parts to it, it's, it's, it's great value. All right. Well, let me go over exactly how this is played. It's just a quick overview of it, not all the advanced rules or anything. But basically, it just it's just a couple phases here. Uh, you're going to have your your planning phase where First, you're going to do any special damage that does to the, the ship. Uh, then you're going to do your planning, where you plan out your actions, which it tells you how many actions you can do and get, it has you space on the board for it. Uh, and you can do stuff like loading your cannons, changing your sails, so forth, so on. 
uh, and then you pick your maneuver. And you're always picking a maneuver one turn out. So you always have like one maneuver already in the, your slot for the current turn. And you'll be picking next turn's maneuver. All right, and that's the planning phase. So then it goes to the action phase. At that point, you'll flip over all of your action tokens that you planned out, and then you'll take any um, immediate actions, like changing the sails uh, and stuff like that. Um, other stuff like repair will, will maintain, uh, you'll stay there until the, the next turn. Then uh, is movement, where you'll take, everybody will take their maneuver card and flip it over. And this is simultaneous, so it's never any one person's turn. Everything, every phase is done simultaneously for all players. So then you'll take out your maneuver card, you'll line it up, and you'll move the, the ship onto the, there's that <laughs> component issue right there. Uh, and then you'll move it onto the card and, and remove the card. All right, and it's pretty quick, it's pretty easy. Um, and then next is gonna be combat phase. This is where you'll take your, these uh, pre-designed uh, range rulers, and it'll tell you exactly what kind of damage markers, which are tokens here, what color ones um, you're actually gonna be used for the damage. And on, on the ship here, it, on the, the shipboard, the log, uh, log book, I think is what they call yep. it, it'll actually tell you what cannons and stuff, uh, how many cannons you can actually fire, which tells you how many damage they actually take uh, from that. Uh, and then everybody takes it simultaneously. So it's not like you get to fire first and, and sink that ship. So uh, that goes pretty quick. Then after combat is the reload. Um, that's where you're going to move anything you fire down into the thing. And if you took any reload actions, you can move empty, um, you can reload empty cannons. And then it just starts back over with the planning phase. And that, that's basically um, the, whole, the whole game. You just keep doing those phases over and over again. Um, but it's pretty cool because it has um, variable wins. Usually you'll pick one, um, either at random or you'll, everybody will agree on it. And it'll stay that way the whole, whole game, and you'll use these to check the wins. And on the base, wherever the wind crosses the base tells you um, basically how the wind's hitting your ship. And that, that gets displayed on the card. So that determines where you, uh, where you move or how far you move. So overall, that's basically the game and the components. So um, at this point, you want to talk about how you feel about the game? Sure. Um, so kind of the debate that's been going around in, uh, I guess, uh, our group right here in a little bit, uh, my son, who, whose opinion, you know, well, not very good anyway. But anyway, uh, no, he, he, he <laughs> thinks that uh, this game is very much like X-Wing or Attack Wing or, you know, like the others. Where there, there's some, I mean, there are some aspects of it, obviously, that are close to being the same. But this game does a great job of not doing that because you're managing your ship. A lot of aspects of your ship that you're able to manage to repairing it. Um, do you get fires? Do you get flooded? Do you have to get the you have to get the pump out, pump out the water, <laughs> put out the fires, uh, and then of course your damage you're taking you're taking damage from men and from the hull itself. So you can lose all your men, your ship will just be that's it. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a lot of just little different aspects of it that um, that take it away from those games, in my opinion. And plus, I mean, with the pieces, the time period yeah. of the game. I think it does a good job of standing alone out there. Yeah. The, uh, I think the, the little uh, terrain pieces uh, help to add a little bit to it. So you're not just playing on the open seas all the time. You got little reefs. And there's even special rules for like um, island uh, emplacements that actually fire at your ships and stuff. So if you're the ones defending, you'll have that little extra bonus if you can draw the enemy into it. So it adds a little extra flair and stuff to the scenarios, which I, I kind of like uh, there. I love the, the range ruler that automatically determines the, the ranges for the, like the chain shot and the grape shot and everything. And this, this part and the maneuver cards are what you know, make people draw the relationship to X-Wing and games like that, which I think this is loosely based off of Wings of Glory right. um, with their maneuver cards and stuff like that. So, but like you said, this shipboard right here changes the the, um, the relationship. So it's not a one to one relationship at all to those other games. It's got a lot more complexity. So at this point, let's rate the game. Let's do it. Uh, so here we'll have three dice. We'll have uh, green dice means go out, buy it, uh, and play it. White die means that if it's on the table, you'll play it. Red die means you hate it, you aren't going to play it. All right, ready? All right, we got a green and a white. All right, I'm going to explain yours first. Uh, yeah, so like you said, there's 
there's a bunch of ships, but they're they're not varied enough, I don't think, to to really get into this game. And that, for me, as a as a miniature collector, I like miniatures that have a lot more variation to their abilities and whatnot, like that. These are, are more or less the same, which is a few bits of difference on each little ship. So to me, it's not worth buying. But if it was on the table, I would play it. Sure. So as a strategy game goes, I uh, definitely just awesome green. Uh, I would agree with what he is saying with the miniatures. There's not a, enough, enough diversity to each model to want to own every single model. So quite honestly, after we get probably just a few more ships, I won't need to buy any more ships. Uh, but the game itself, um, I mean, I think it's very enjoyable. Uh, I think it's easy to learn. If you have somebody who's knowledgeable of the game, uh, they can help keep track of what's going on here. You, you know, you can get probably four players easily, and then six, maybe six, maybe even eight players playing this game would be a blast. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, remember to, to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. And as always, uh, be sure to support your local hobby shop.